What's up, YouTube? In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through this project we recently completed at the agency I work for, 368. We're going on a team retreat for the first time in two years, and to announce the location to our team, we created this experience in Webflow. So in our Monday morning meeting, we broke out into groups of three, and each team tried to answer a series of questions and find scavenger hunt items on the site, all to try and figure out where we're going on retreat. When they reached the end, a QR code popped up saying scan me to find the location. This led to a mobile web app also built in Webflow where our team can log in and then compete against each other throughout the retreat to collect stars. We also built a leaderboard into this to see who's in the lead and the top three people on the last night will win prizes uh, you can check lodging details from here. We also have free time activities that our team can sign up for so we know who's attending what. And then an itinerary that breaks down each step of the day. So our retreat is themed after the Olympics because we'll be going to the Olympic Museum. And the slogan is Light the Fire Within, which apparently was an old Olympic theme. Corey Snyder, our brand design lead, created this whole brand for a treat, which is really awesome. Our main company logo is made out of a box, and he used a bunch of little boxes to recreate the Olympic logo with sort of a flame in the middle, and then he created this intro screen here. The original idea was just send people to a website called lightthefirewithin.us, and it would pop up the location of retreat. But then we thought, what if we could make it a little more challenging? So we created basically a series of questions and they would answer that question, hit submit, and it would tell them if they got it right or wrong. But then we thought, what if we could make the user experience even better and just not require them to hit, hit submit, which means we would have to automatically detect the number of characters in each answer, which was gonna be a little tricky, but as you type, basically each one of these dots would fill in until you complete all of the uh, characters needed to answer the question. And if you got it wrong, everything would turn red and the dots would shake like someone's uh, shaking their head no. And if you got it right, everything would turn green and the dots would sort of bounce or wave uh, like someone shaking their head yes. But then we thought, uh, what if we can clean up the design a little bit, maybe remove this underline. So to do that, we needed this blinking cursor to always be focused and in view whenever one of the questions popped up. Or without that, you can't really tell there's any form field here. So this is our only uh, sort of form element before someone starts typing. And then we changed all of these to boxes to resemble our logo. And then once a question is typed up, if it turns green, that means it's right. And this is kind of how it looks. And then we end with the thank you screen. Um, and Corey created this really cool idea for this dot that would be sort of following your cursor and reveal the gradient underneath. And if I zoom out here, you'll see all this is is one big black box uh, with a hole punched in the middle to reveal the stuff underneath. And that's exactly how I created it in Webflow was just one image there. We were going after this sort of animated grain slash noise effect, but I couldn't really find a clean way to recreate it in code. Then I stumbled on this animated grain after effects tutorial using the rough and edges effect. I'll share the link to this tutorial in the description below. I was able to recreate it using after effects, but the rough and edges effect can't be exported as a Lottie file. And whenever I tried to make it into a GIF, it blurred the edges a little too much. So instead I exported a couple frames from the animation as static PNGs that look like this, and then just looped through all of them on the live site to create this sort of effect. I have this one mouse move and viewport interaction that works just like a custom cursor and it's moving that whole div with the circle. For our cursor that trails, I needed to have five copies of the exact same image. And each of these have their own mouse move and viewport interaction, each with a different smoothing applied. So this first dot has a smoothing of zero. If we go to the second dot, the smoothing increases all the way up to 68. The third one increases to 79. And it just keeps increasing the smoothing so they each lag behind each other. I created a page load in animation that just slides everything in and also a page loadout interaction on click of this hero button and that just basically slides everything out. We were able to set up the questions as CMS items. So these are all of our questions here and inside of each one we have the answer and our jQuery is just automatically detecting how many characters are in each answer. And then we have the GIF and that's updating those uh, five images that are empty uh, is being updated with jQuery to match each one of these flashing images here. For the app, we started with some inspiration that kind of looked like this. We were leaning towards that dark mode to match the uh, main web experience. And we started with this intro video that revealed the location of retreat, followed by a couple onboarding screens. 
and then an account sign up where our team members could select their color for their profile picture and some of the app UI even follows this color. Um, and then from there we had our activities and for the leaderboard, we don't want to reveal till the last night who's in first place, second or third place. Um, so we decided to put all of these in a random order, the top three, and then create an animation where they constantly jump between different spots while you're viewing the page. So you can't tell uh, who's in what place from there. And then we have our lodging right there. And we kind of decided to try out two different colors. One was a little bit lighter and another was more bold and matched kind of what the main web experience was like. And we decided to go with the second option here. Inside Webflow for the app, we have a collection for all of our users. And everyone in here is basically has their own collection item and we assigned them their own password in advance and gave them that password. I'm saving their item ID in here and I'm using Zapier to basically run a zap anytime they make any sort of change, whether they update their profile color, or maybe they're answering a question right at storing how many questions they got right in here. Um, even if they choose a free time activity, they're all listed here and it assigns them the correct free time activity from there. So for the account sign in, I basically just have this password field inside of Webflow and all of our team information is on the page inside of a hidden collection. Now this isn't secure for a client facing site, but for our own internal app, this was going to work just fine. Whenever you type in a password and hit enter, it's going to loop through all of our collection items and find the password for each user. And then if that password is correct, it'll add a class called active user onto this collection item and use all of its colors, all of its information and pull that onto the page with jQuery. Things like which question a user got right or wrong is all being saved on their device with cookies. But whenever they make a critical change to their account that affects what other users see, like getting a question right and increasing their total number of points, I have a hidden Webflow form on the site that I'm able to populate all that data in again, like their profile picture, the number of points they have correct, the color they selected, and send that all through Zapier to update the collection. In Zapier, I was able to link up all the vital information we need, like the collection item ID, the color selected, the activity chosen, and everything there. Using the paid plan on Zapier, results are pretty instant. So if I answer two questions correctly and head to another page on the app, and I decide to scroll down, then I'll see that my user instantly has those two questions answered correctly, which is updated in the Webflow CMS. We created a public facing version of the first web reveal experience. So if you'd like to check that one out, I'll leave the link in the description below. Microsites like this that provide value to the end user in turn create so much value for the company. And I'll be talking about how to create uncommon microsites in Webflow, the three key ingredients of every great microsite at Webflow's no code conference this year. So if you're interested in attending that, check the link in the description below. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one.